Hey everyone, I hope you are doing good and staying safe. I welcome you all to this interesting tutorial on SQL versus NoSQL by Simply Learn. As you know, we are living in a world that is full of data and over the last few decades, there has been tremendous increase in the usage of data globally. And you can rightly say that data is the new oil. So in order to store these large amounts of data, we need databases. And there are a lot of databases available in the market. And in today's session, we'll focus on two major types of databases that is SQL and NoSQL. In today's session, we'll understand what exactly are these two databases and we'll see the differences between these two databases and when to use them. But before we get started, if you're a tech geek and love watching tech videos, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Learn to stay updated with all the latest technologies and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us go through the agenda for today's session. We'll start the tutorial by understanding what is SQL and then we'll look at why we use SQL. And after that, we'll understand what is NoSQL database. And then we'll understand why we use NoSQL. Up next, we'll understand how to use NoSQL and how exactly it works. And then we'll look at some different types of NoSQL databases. And after that, we'll have a detailed comparison between SQL and NoSQL database. And finally, we'll conclude the session by understanding some advantages and disadvantages of using NoSQL and we'll also look when to use SQL as well as NoSQL. So without any further delay, let us dive straight into today's topic on SQL versus NoSQL. Firstly, let us understand what is SQL. SQL as it stands is defined as structure query language is basically a standardized programming language that is used to manage databases and it performs various operations on data in them. Initially created in 1970s, SQL is widely used by many companies and technologies nowadays. SQL is used for modifying database tables and index structures. It is also used in adding, updating and deleting rows of data. It is also used to retrieve subsets of information from within the database management system. Now SQL is used to perform various actions such as to insert data, to update data, modify and delete the data in the database as well. Now, when we talk about SQL, it is important that we talk about relational database systems as well. A relational database system or RDM, RDBMS is a database system that stores and fetches data in the form of table, that is in the form of rows and columns. Tables are used to store data in relational databases about related objects. Each column contains attributes of data, whereas each row holds a record of unique data known as a key, which helps in making relationship between different data points that is present in different table which makes us easy to understand. Now, these relational databases or RDBMS are managed using SQL language to perform various operations. Therefore, SQL codes are used to retrieve information from these relational databases by doing various interactive operations like using join, create, truncate, delete, alter, and etc. Let us now look at some popular SQL databases. Some popular SQL databases that are available are MySQL, Oracle Database, Microsoft SQL, Server SQL Lite, and PostgreSQL. Now that we have understood what is SQL, let us now understand what is NoSQL. NoSQL database is a non-relational database management system that does not require a fixed schema. That is, the data is, store, is not stored in the form of tables in NoSQL databases. Basically, it avoids any uh, joining or creating or scaling the databases in SQL. The major purpose of using a NoSQL database is for distributed data storage, which is having high volumes of data storage needs. NoSQL is used for big data and real-time web applications. Like for example, companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google collect terabytes of users' data and every single day. So basically, NoSQL database stands for not only SQL or not SQL, and uh, it is introduced in the year 1998 by Carl Strauss. Now, traditional RDBMS uses SQL syntax to store and retrieve data for further insights. Now, instead, our NoSQL database system enc encompasses a wide range of database technologies that can store structured, semi-structured, as well as unstructured data. Let us now understand why we use NoSQL. We use hierarchical storage structure instead of a table-like structure. That means 
uh, before relational databases, companies used a hierarchical database system which had, with a tree-like structure for database tables. Now, these early database management systems enabled users to organize large quantities of data. However, they were complex, often required a particular application and in a limited way which they could uncover the data that is stored. Now, these limitations eventually led to the development of relational database that is the data that is stored in tables. Uh, so, SQL provided an interface to interact with relational data and allowing the analyst to connect tables by merging on common fields. But as time passed, the demand for faster and more desperate usage of larger data sets became increasingly more important for emerging technologies, for uh, e-commerce and other big giants. For that, uh, NoSQL has became the alternative for everyone. Now, another reason is it is now we have constant addition of new features and functions in the NoSQL uh, database, right? So that means like uh, we know that technology is being rapidly evolved and uh, huge enormous amounts of data has been released on a daily basis and it's important that we store this data and access in a quick way. Now NoSQL is the best database to use for large amounts of data or for ever changing data sets. It is also best use when you have to uh, have flexible data model or need that don't fit into a relational model. And finally, when if, if you want that uh, there is no relationship between any stored data and you feel it is not important, then you can use NoSQL as well. Let us now look at some popular NoSQL databases. Some popular NoSQL databases are MongoDB, Apache HBase, Cassandra, Redis, Neo4j and etc. Let us now look at some types of NoSQL databases that are present. Firstly, we have document oriented. Uh, the document database typically stores self-describing JSON, XML and BSON documents. They are similar to key value stores but in this case a value is a single document that stores all the data to related to a specific key. Popular fields in the document can be indexed to provide faster retrieval without knowing the key as well. Each document can have same or different data structure. MongoDB, CouchDB, CloudEnd are some examples of document based uh, NoSQL database. Next we have key value pair database. The data in this is stored like a key value pairs. Key value pair data stored in database in the form of a hash table. Each key is unique in this case. The value stored may be an integer, a string, a binary object, a JSON object, etc. The key value store based database is simplest database among all the data databases in NoSQL database. Redis, coherence are examples of some key value stored databases. Next, we have column based or column stored database in NoSQL, which is in this the data stored in grouped columns instead of rows. Every column values are stored separately. It delivers high performance on aggregate functions like count, sum, max, minimum. Group of columns uh, data stored in key spaces like schema in RDBMS. Key spaces contains group of rows or columns and uh, HBase, Bigtable, Aculamo are some examples of column store databases. And finally, we have graph oriented or graph store databases. Data in this is represented in the form of a directed graph. It consists of nodes and edges. Nodes represent an entity and any edge represents the relation between the two nodes. Node edge to be unique. Social networks, logistics, spatial data used a graphical storage database. Neo4j, infinite graph orient db, flock db are examples of some graph storage database. Next, let us understand how exactly NoSQL database works. For that, I'm going to take the example of MongoDB uh, database. Now, MongoDB is based on the NoSQL document store model in which data objects are stored as separate documents inside a collection instead of a traditional column and row of a relational database. Now, uh, MongoDB groups data through collections and basically a collection is simply a grouping of documents that have a same or similar purpose. A collection acts similarly to a table in a traditional SQL database. However, it has a major difference. A collection is not enforced by a strict schema. That is, it does not have any fixed schema at all. Instead, documents in a collection can have slightly diff different structure from another as needed. This reduces the need to break items in a document into several different tables at, as it is often done in an SQL implementation. Now coming to document, a document is a representation of a single entity of a data in MongoDB database. A collection consists of one or more related objects. Major difference that exists between MongoDB and SQL in that 
Documents are different from rows. Row data is flat with one column for each value in the row. However, in MongoDB, documents can contain embedded sub-documents providing a much closer inherent data model for your applications. Now, if I just have to map what are exactly and how it is different from RDBMS, a collection in a MongoDB is equivalent to the tables in RDBMS and a document in MongoDB is equivalent to the rows in RDBMS and fields in MongoDB is equivalent to the columns in RDBMS. So this is how a document looks uh, in a MongoDB. As you can see, this is similar to a row in RDBMS, but we just have a field and a value that is taken separately instead of a tabular value. And another important thing to note here is that a MongoDB supports dynamic schema, which means one document of a collection can have a number of fields while the other document can have less or same number of fields. That is, if a collection can have uh, four fields while other document can have only just two fields, which is basically not possible in a relational database, uh, which does not exist. It does not support because it needs a particular and a fixed schema in that. If getting your learning started is half the battle, what if you could do that for free? Visit SkillUp by Simply Learn. Click on the link in the description to know more. Let us now understand some differences between the SQL and NoSQL. Firstly, SQL is a relational database and NoSQL is a non-relational database. That means SQL databases are in the form of tables that can contain rows and columns and they have fixed logical schema design. All the data in SQL is arranged in tabular format and it is well suited for complex queries. And on the other hand, NoSQL databases is a non-relational database. That means it does not store data in the form of tables and it contains collections and inside every collection, there is a document that contains the data of a single entry. This data is stored in the form of a key value pair, unlike SQL where we store data under the fixed schema. So as we discussed, uh, SQL has a fixed schema design and structure and NoSQL has a dynamic schema design and structure. SQL can handle complex queries, whereas NoSQL can handle large volumes of data. Now SQL is vertically scalable. Now uh, SQL databases support vertical scaling, which means it improves the single server by increasing RAM, SSD or CPU. In vertical scaling, we are restricted to a single system and we can improve it as much as we want till the practical limit. Whereas in NoSQL database, we can do horizontal scaling because they support distributed computing or distributed systems. In horizontal scaling, we can add another node or computer for better performance and we can add n number of such servers or nodes uh, as per a requirement. So as discussed, we can add as many as nodes as we want and this is why we prefer NoSQL for high scalability because there is no limit for scaling. And finally, it follows ACID properties that is atomicity, that means transactions should be performed at once or it shouldn't happen at all. Consistency, that means the state of a database should remain consistent before and after the transaction. Isolation, one transaction shouldn't affect another transaction and should be independent. And we lastly, durability. Now, successful transactions should be reflected even if there is any system failure. Whereas the NoSQL follows cap property, that is consistency, availability, and partial tolerance. Let us now discuss some advantages and disadvantages of uh, using NoSQL. Firstly, let us discuss about the advantages. NoSQL provides high performance and scalability, and it also has a lot of availability and flexibility. It is open source and it is schema less as well. That is, you can directly uh, download the NoSQL databases from the internet, unlike some commercial databases that are available in the internet. While on the other hand, there are some disadvantages as well. That is, it lacks the standardization. That means it does not have a fixed query uh, in order to retrieve data from the databases, which result in uh, consistency issues. And since it has all these consistency issues and does not retrieve data properly, it has a limited query capabilities. So that brings us to the end of today's session on SQL versus NoSQL guys. So you might have a doubt that when you need to use SQL and when we need to use NoSQL. Now SQL is easiest to work with relational databases. That is, it is useful when you want to perform complex queries using various operations like join and etc. And if you want to perform quick data storage and retrieval operations, you can use SQL. 
Whereas you can use NoSQL if you are designing a distributed systems and if you want a hierarchical storage structure instead of a tabular like structure. Also NoSQL gives you the flexibility to create dynamic structures and can add features as you as you want. Also there is no asset properties during the creation of any applications while creating NoSQL databases as well. So in this way you can use NoSQL and uh, SQL as per your requirement. With that we have come to the end of session guys. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. If you have any further queries regarding any of the topics that were covered in today's session, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and a team of experts will be more than happy to resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, stay safe and keep coding. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.